What's up guys? So for today we got Akola versus Owen Grand Finals from Let's Make Moves Miami. The dreaded Steve Ditto. We are definitely hitting that point in the game. Where Steve players are just getting good enough now that they can like really understand how to use matchups and well, this isn't a Smash for a Bayo thing yet, there are lots of shades of it. In fact, if you're reading the, uh, the thumbnail, it says, but if you close your eyes, because it was like a meme on Twitter, where basically it was comparing this to Bayo Ditto Grand Finals at the last, like, Evo Smash 4 was at, which was also kind of the unceremonious death of the game, to be honest. Now, I don't think this is as bad, but we are definitely, it's getting to that point where it's like, damn. It feels like there's less and less characters and players that can really fight, like the top players of this character, because this character's counter play is just straight up more than any other character. So, scary stuff. Granted, I think some characters like Min Min, Cloud, just do regular for Steve, probably just win the matchup. So, it's one of those things you might be forced to play certain characters to really have a chance versus Steve long term. But obviously, you have to see how it plays out, people learn the matchup, counter play. Leo is obviously beat Akola dominantly, but I want to see like Akola versus Leo with like Akola having two or three sets worth of data on the matchup to really understand how it goes. Because that is one of the things about Steve that is really hard to deal with is that like it feels like you're fighting like a rival in like an RPG, right? Where it's like every time you fight him, they just come back stronger. They've leveled up, they have new tricks, and it's just like at some point, one of the tricks is enough, right? With that said, I think the Ditto itself is kind of fun to watch. <laughs> like, and I know a lot of people go, oh my god, Steve, this character's lame. But look at stuff like that. that that's funny. See, both characters do this nonsense to each other. It, it's like a bit of a thrill. It's like, wow. <laughs> Daisy of your own medicine, right? But like, there's so much nonsense happening. The characters are each other. They're pulling up blocks, minecarts, all this stuff. And it was kind of fascinating to see how the players try to deal with their own tool sets. In fact, you could probably learn a lot by just watching these two players play this data and really sit down and analyze what they're doing to beat their own character. In fact, I think that's extremely valuable information because I'm sure there's definitely things you can apply depending on your character, right? If you're a sword, you can probably look at the spacing. If you're more of a zoner, you can probably I look at how they like bait out Steve in certain ways. If you're a pressure character, you can look at how they mix Steve and keep him at disadvantage. And there's always something to look at. With that said, I, you know, it's uh, it's still kind of sad to to see we're getting these kind of ditto grand finals. I don't think we've actually had a grand finals with like a character ditto in ultimate, like a national. Like, ever. Now think about it. Right, like, even without top tiers, I'm thinking, like, did we ever have, like, a Joker? Like, national ditto? That was, like, you know, future Joker means, not someone maybe pulling out their secondary Joker because they gave up. And I don't think we ever had that with, like, Joker, Paolo, uh, Wolf. Maybe, if anything, I feel like that could have happened with Wolf. Yeah, this is a new one. Um, in Smash 4, you'd get Bayo dittos and Cloud dittos quite often. Uh, you even got... I won't be surprised if there was, like, a Mario Ditto, Fox Ditto, etc. Just because... Less top tiers in that game, to be fair. Less characters people even consider playing. Now, something else worth mentioning. Uh, right now, all the, actually, no, no, I won't mention when we get to it. In the second set. If you watch the set, they know exactly what I'm, uh, like, alluding to. Yeah, so just watch this play out right now. Man, it really is hard for Steve to get around his own bullshit. Like, his lack of mobility means, like, minecart stuff, down air stuff. The block gimps, just so free. Alright, we got the, the Robin pick. So, I, I remember seeing this pick and I was like... I can see some things Robin may be able to do. But honestly, watching this, I felt like Odin just... He's just getting outplayed completely. Because you see him, like, really burning his Leaven Sword and just swinging. In ways where it feels like he's using it so much, he doesn't have a Leaven Sword now. He can't threaten Steve. He's also just whiffing a lot. Yeah, my idea is like, you know, Robin might just be able to put a lot of pressure onto Steve. Would strip the range of his attacks and the projectiles, right? But he's so slow that 
he has trouble with disadvantage, he has trouble like forcing approaches past walls, and basically he can't put the pressure on that you really want to like put on versus Steve. Arc fire. Eleven sword aerials. And, and honestly, this one blow first, right? Takes the first stock. Oh wait, he's at 100, and then minecart hits his landing. And that was... I'm also kind of surprised he brought, uh... Actually, I'm not saying I'm surprised he brought a cold FD. One thing I've noticed when fighting Steve is... The problem in most rule sets is Steve has, I'd say, like, two stages that are generally not good. Uh, Smash Fill is basically an auto ban for Steve players. And then a lot of times they get rid of Town. Oh, I guess it depends on the matchup. I feel like Town is not a great stage for Steve. Honestly, just because of the resources, so like being those two stages, you're fine because he's great on Battlefield and small Battlefield, he's amazing on PS2. FD is absurd on Kalos, is actually unfair. But at this stage, I don't think he's particularly great on Hollow Bastion because even though he can like mine somewhere in the center, I think he's from more iron and diamond, or maybe just more iron. The stage layout, in my opinion, the single platform doesn't help him that much. So you're gonna have these kind of scary, but like, there's not many alternatives. And that's one of the hardest things about this character, too. In the long set, you run out of stages you can bring him to. It feels like you're always counterpicking yourself. It's also a sign of a strong character, of course. And, ooh. The, uh... The robbing of the train. It is, this is where I feel like... Well, this is definitely a turning point, Rise, right? So Owen is up in Grand's winner's side. Gets 3-0. And you can just see he does not know what to do. And then it cut to this. But, like, and you don't want to do that. He's a young player, so he's got to learn. But one of the worst things you can do, in my opinion, is, like, wear, like, on, like, your face that you're frustrated, upset. Like, you see him slumping back. You see his scowl. Grant, I always, like, piss on playing. But, like, you can see him, like, waiting. Like, like his posture just tells you he's done. And it's definitely hard to have like the right mentality going into a set of like I gotta play when I gotta do my best. But I think one of the worst things you can do is make it clear you're giving up. I also honestly I, I think after how much he got destroyed, it might have been worth starting this out with a different character. Cause here's another like point of logic. Once you give up on a character in a matchup, like you know, at this point I think Ona just knows, alright, he can't beat a Cola in this dinner right now, unless he has some crazy adjustments, which is possible. But, like, it's unless you know, like, you have some good adjustments ready, you're not just kind of playing it by ear. It might be worth trying other characters, even sticking the character out. Like, the Robin pick, I think it sold off very well. I think there's potential there. I think you could argue that a Cola should have stayed Robin for one more game to start this up with Robin. Just to see what he can make happen with a bit of time to warm up. His warming up a character and getting used to just the pacing and the mind games or whatever of the character, even if you play them a lot, is important. Grant, I'm not sure how much Onan actually plays the character, uh, Robin nowadays. That was like his x men also. That was... I hate to see up Snatch. It's actually one of the most powerful Snatches in the game, and I don't know why. Unless he missed AO. That was. Bruh. This is so funny. And then this is... In my opinion, the rest of the set was just like... It, I don't know what the term is. When you're playing it out because you pretty much have to. But like, you've conceded already. Like... All this stuff, right? You know, the, the whole like, Ah, I give up, like, face. Then... Trying Steve, even though he looks like he has no plan. After trying to rob an out where it just got destroyed. And then... The, just giving up into the show. And it's like... Another thought process here is... Well, it's very hard not to get frustrated. But you have to think about it in terms of... Alright, I don't think I can win this. What can I learn? You know, maybe you play the matchup still and try to learn something for next time. Try things out. Because once again, unless I think... Unless Odin's like really going to put time into show for this matchup later. Whereas the Cola. I, I don't think it's too valuable, right, to play... Well, I'm assuming at this point he's probably not to practice for character. He's definitely throwing things at the wall. Which should give a Cola a lot of confidence as well. But, like, the the, the long-term game is not 
Again, not really there. I will say, Shogo's character has should be good for Steve on paper, but Shogo's a character that does good for everyone on paper. He's a character that, like, when you look at this character, he is, he, like, is basically a DLC character, right? Um, like, arts are a DLC thing, <laughs> changing your, like, whatever, your properties. And just the way he has massive aerials, uh, but the problem with this character is, he doesn't actually have good stats. His kill power, his damage output is all mid. Um, and also his mobility, it's not only kind of poor, even with arts. Because even when he has the arts, his mobility becomes very limited. Like he has jump art. You know he's gonna have like a lot of trouble pushing the ground and his jumps are super high and floaty. So that makes all of his jump movement very linear. Speed art, slow jumps, he has almost uncontrollable ground movement. Even without arts, his movement is very awkward because he can't like change his jump momentum that well, but he's floaty. And he's not particularly fast. And I think that holds him back a lot. So a character like Steve, who specializes also I was just said. A character like Steve who already specializes in controlling a lot of the stage and limiting the opponent's movement. Like it's like that's why it sounds like a theory should do should do good, and then in practice you see it not work out well. And he also has a character period. But yeah, no, yeah. It's like, I don't even blame him for just giving up after taking the stock. It's like, all right, you know you lost it, whatever. But this is like going out with like, not even like a flickering flame. This, this is like saying, you know what, dog? I don't want to plug my controller, but I want to plug my controller. You can have this one. I'm going to just mess around unless I hit the lottery somehow. Uh with this said, Joker is another character. A lot of C players don't like this matchup. Like, you can see Onan has ideas for these characters. He's not picking something like DK versus Steve, luckily. Although, Chunky Kong actually beat uh, one of the top Steves in this bracket, so... Maybe DK does beat Steve! But, yeah. So, yeah, like, trying a different characters makes sense. And I know a lot of C players hate this matchup and Zero Suit. Just because the character is so mobile. Not just mobile, but so insanely mobile that Steve basically can't really hit the character the character wants to like play super evasive and Joker is so good at holding advantage so he doesn't kill you in advantage easily but he just keeps you there um, with like back airs and mobility and dash attacks and whatever constantly so that is a very strong attribute for the character also because he's so fast you can actually force uh, Steve in the situations like this where he's just out of iron right Granted, he has diamonds, so I don't think he cares much. Man, that was... That was 54 off the jab. Uh... He does more damage off, like, his mid-percent, like, combos of random jabs than most characters have in their combos, period. Back here, and he is out of there. I was I'm just looking at his name right now. Why is his name Circle Triangle Square? <laughs> and then Nicola's name is just dot 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 in game. What are these in game tags? Nicola, the silent destroyer of the USA. He doesn't need to say anything, he just his gameplay for himself. And then Onan, he really likes shapes. Oh no, no, oh my, I remember seeing this and I was like, he's not dead. He got jabbed at 27 and like, he kill, got kill streak off that. that. That kill stream is it. But yeah. Uh, you can see the frustration on his face. The the frustration and kind of hopelessness. He's smiling, he's like, you did a good job. But. I don't know. Odin's young, you know, it's we're definitely seeing the next like generation of like top Smash players, like the young kids rising up right now. And I, I I've seen enough Smash generations growing up. You know? And I think one of the most important things to any player trying to get better at the game when they're already like good for, like at playing the game is how they handle the losses. Because I've seen a lot of players that can be good not handle losses well enough uh, for whatever reason. And they kinda just like 
they flatline at that point skill wise. But they stopped falling off in the losses against him too much. And so I think this is really important at least for Onan to kind of understand now. And hopefully someone will talk to him like, hey, you gotta understand this, you gotta fix this up. And use these kind of losses to your strength. Because that, that's going to potentially hold him back. I know even with like Tweak, for example, right? Great player, but for the longest time, his mentality uh, super held him back with character crises and all that stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples. But I think it's like the most like... I think it's the one that a lot of ultimate people really, really understand, right? Because that's been a constant discussion. Yeah. Hope this was an interesting video. I know I didn't really analyze the game at all, but I thought talking about... All this stuff being much more fascinating. So, with that said, guys, catch you for the next one. Like always, you know, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Help me with algorithm. I would love to hit 50,000 subscribers within the year. Just saying. All right, bye.